In this lesson, we're going to work with what's known as the side splitter theorem. Uh, so let's begin by just reading the statement of the side splitter theorem here, and then we'll see what it would say for triangle BAC that we have in the diagram here. So it says that if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides into segments of proportional lengths. So let's say we had a line segment or line that was parallel to AC. So I'm going to choose to sketch that in up here. I'm going to sketch a segment up here that's parallel to AC. I'll mark that off, the little parallel line markings there. I'm also going to label this point here D and this point here E. So that parallel segment splits side BA into two different segments, and it also splits side BC into two different segments. And the measurements you get, like the measurement for BD and DA, and the measurement for BE and EC, um, are in the same ratio, or another way to say that is those segments are split proportionally. Segment BA and BC are split uh, proportionally. So we could say the top part, BD, so the bottom part, DA, would match the top part on the other side, BE, to EC. That's what the side splitter theorem would say. Uh, the ratio of BD to DA is proportional to BE to EC. Um, so we'll use that to find missing parts in a diagram like this. Now, it's also important to notice that there are two similar triangles in this diagram as well. Since we have that DE is parallel to AC, um, we'd have two different pairs of congruent corresponding angles for those parallel lines. Um, angle BDE here would be congruent to angle BAC down here, and angle BED over here would be congruent to angle BCA down here. So that would mean the smaller triangle, uh, triangle BED here, would be similar to the larger one, uh, triangle BCA, by angle-angle similarity. So it's important to take note of that. We may need to use those similar triangles um, to find other missing measurements in this diagram. So again, triangle BED is similar to triangle BCA by angle-angle similarity. So again, one thing to notice is that this proportion here says nothing about DE and AC. Uh, so say you needed to find one of those measurements, you may need to go back to those two similar triangles. So let's take a look at an example that involves using that splitter theorem. So we're given that BD is parallel to AE, which we'll mark up. BD is parallel to AE here. Um, let's also mark the congruent angles we get from those parallel lines. Angle CBD here and angle CAE down here are a pair of congruent corresponding angles for those parallel lines. And same thing with angle CDB over here and angle CEA down here. Alright, so we're asked to find the values of x and y, and we definitely have a splitter theorem set up here. BD is splitting uh, side CA and CE, and we would know those two sides are split proportionally. And since x is on the upper part of side CE here, um, we could set up a proportion that's based on the splitter theorem to find that measurement. So I'm going to say that to solve for x, we could use splitters. So our proportion is going to say that 4 to 10 is proportional to x to 15. That's the way to apply the splitter theorem in this diagram. So we'll say 4 to 10, that ratio, is proportional to x to 15. All right, so to solve for x, we just need to cross multiply. So let's see, we'd have 10 times x this way. And 4 times 15 makes 60. And if we divide both sides by 10, we'll see that x has a value of 6. Okay, and we'll put that in the diagram now, too. We'll say this measurement over here we know is 6. Okay, great. Now, to find the value of y, you have to notice where y is located. It's not on one of these two sides that's getting split. So to solve for y, we cannot use the splitter theorem. We're actually going to have to look for something different in this diagram to solve for y. So remember that there are two similar triangles in this diagram. Uh, triangle BCD is similar to triangle ACE, um, and Y and this Y plus 20 may be a pair of corresponding sides in those similar triangles. So I'm actually going to take a second to draw those two similar triangles out separately. It sometimes helps you to match up their different measurements. Uh, I'm also going to mark off that this whole segment CA here has a length of 14, as 4 and 10 would make 14, and over here you'd have a length of 21, 6 and 15 makes 21. 
So again, I'm going to take a second to draw those two similar triangles separately. Okay, so separately drawn uh, triangle CBD and triangle CAE. And we know they're similar, so let's match up their corresponding sides now. Uh, the side measurement of 4 corresponds to 14 over here. Um, this measurement of 6 corresponds to the measurement of 21. And this measurement here, y, corresponds to y plus 20. Um, so we could pick either the 4 to 14 ratio or 6 to 21 ratio um, to solve for y. So to solve for y, again, we'll notice that we're using similar triangles. We have to use similar triangles and not the splitter theorem. So I'm going to pick that 4 to 14 ratio. So we'll say 4 to 14, that ratio would be equal to y to y plus 20. Again, that's just matching up corresponding side measurements in those two similar triangles. So one thing to notice here is this 4 to 14 ratio is not this 4 to 10 ratio we used when solving for x when we use the splitter theorem. One of the most common mistakes in this problem is people will do 4 to 10 and say that's proportional to y to y plus 20. Um, that does not work. You cannot use the splitter theorem to find the value of y here. So again, that value of y is not on one of those segments that's being split by bd. So again, to solve here, we'll just do some cross multiplication. I'm going to put y plus 20 in parentheses. So let's see, this way we'd have 4 times y plus 20. And that would equal 14y. Uh, we distribute the 4, we get 4y plus 80 would equal 14y. Uh, we'll subtract 4y from both sides here. And that would get us, let's see, 80 would equal 10y. And we'll divide both sides by 10, and y would have a value of 8. So again, no big deal, but you have to be careful of using similar triangles and splitters together in a question like this. Be very careful when you're going to use the splitter theorem. Uh, we could not use the side splitter theorem to find the value of y here. Again, uh, y is more based on using those similar triangles. So before we go on to some other examples and concepts, I'd like you to pause the video and try this practice question that involves using the splitter theorem. You're given that BD is parallel to AE, and you're asked to find the value of x and y in this diagram. And again, you want to be very careful of when you can use the splitter theorem and when you have to use similar triangles to find uh, the value of either x or y in this diagram. So an idea that's closely related to the side splitter theorem is this idea of a transversal splitter. So it says that if three or more parallel lines intersect two transversals, so that would be like this transversal here and this transversal here, then those parallel lines cut off the transversals proportionally. So we're going to say that P, N, and M are all parallel in this diagram. So we're going to say we're given that P is parallel to N is parallel to M. And we'll mark that off. Um, then what this says is the transversals um, are cut off proportionally. So this measurement here and this measurement here, um, that ratio would be proportional to this measurement to this measurement. So I'm going to put some variables in for that. I'm going to say this measurement is A, this measurement is B, and this measurement is C, and this measurement is D. So very similar to the side splitter theorem, um, that would tell us that A to B, that ratio, is proportional to C to D. So now let's take a look at an example or two of using that uh, transversal splitter idea. So in this diagram, we're given that P, N, and M are all parallel. So we're going to mark that off. And we're asked to determine the value of x. Um, so we can easily apply that transversal splitter idea here. Um, the ratio of x to 4 would be proportional to 15 to x plus 4. Again, these parallel lines um, would cut off those transversals proportionally. So to solve for x, we're going to set up the proportion x over 4 would be equal to 15 over x plus 4. So again, to solve for x here, we're going to cross multiply. I'm going to group x plus 4 in parentheses. So this way we'd have x times the quantity x plus 4. And then for our other cross product, we'd have 4 times 15, which is 60. Uh, we'll distribute the x. We'll have x squared plus 4x. And that would equal 60. 
Um, so you'll notice we have a quadratic equation here, so we're going to subtract 60 and make the equation equal to 0, um, and solve this by factoring. So we have x squared plus 4x minus 60 equals 0, and we'll break this up into two factors. So for x squared, we know we can do x times x, and let's see, I'm thinking we could do plus 10 and minus 6. Um, 10 times negative 6 would make negative 60, and if we multiplied 10 with x, we'd have 10x. x times negative 6 would make negative 6x, and combining those would get us that 4x. Okay, so we'll set each factor to 0 now. We have x plus 10 could equal 0, which means x could be negative 10. And we have x minus 6 is 0, which means x could be 6. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, um, this value of x equals negative 10 would cause a negative measurement to happen here and here. Um, so we will throw out the solution because it makes the lengths negative. Again, not that the variable itself is negative, but then in the diagram, um, that makes lengths negative. Um, however, x equals 6 seems reasonable. So it's very easy to check that we're correct here. If we're saying x is 6, then this measurement here is 6, and this measurement here is 10. We could very easily check that um, these transversals are split proportionally. So let's see, is 6 to 4 proportional to 15 to 10? So to check that, we could either reduce each of those uh, ratios and see if they're both 3 to 2, um, or we could check their cross products. If these are proportional, uh, ratios, their cross products should be the same. So we have 6 times 10 and 4 times 15. Well, both of those can make 60. So in fact, we do have that 6 to 4 is proportional to 15 to 10. So our last example here is a lot of different ways you can solve it. Um, and I'm going to show you one way that involves um, kind of using the transversal splitter idea a little bit differently. Um, so we still have that set up since we have five different parallel line segments here and they're each um, kind of splitting two different transversal segments, this one here and this one here. And our goal is just to find the values of P, Q, R, and S on this transversal segment. And one thing I notice is that this entire measurement of 115 is given to us um, for this segment here. So I'm going to find the entire measurement for this transversal segment too. So if we add 7 and 3, we get 10. Add 2, we get 12. And 11 would make 23 for that entire measurement. So one way we could approach this would be to incorporate um, this measurement of 23 and 115 um, in setting up our proportions. So we could kind of match up, say, this measurement of 7 to this measurement of 23, and say that's proportional to P to 115, um, kind of comparing a part of each transversal segment, the entire measurement, um, and doing the same thing over here. Um, we could also say that 3 to 23 would be proportional to Q to 115, and so on. Um, so we're going to set up four proportions that all involve that idea, um, and then obviously solve for P, Q, R, and S. So we'll definitely be pros at solving proportions and cross-multiplying by the end of this one. So what I'm going to do first is just write down all four of those proportions, um, and then we'll go back and solve each one. So we're going to begin by saying 7 to 23, again, is proportional to P to 115. That'll be our first proportion. So again, notice that's going like part to whole, and then part to whole on the other segment. Then for our next proportion, we'll say 3 to 23 um, will be proportional to Q to 115. Uh, so let's leave some space to uh, solve each one. You should do the same in your notes. We'll say 3 to 23 would be proportional to Q to 115. And then if we continue this process, we'll say 2 to 23 uh, would be proportional to R to 115. And finally, 11 to 23 uh, would match S to 115. So that's one way we can set this up. Again, notice the consistency in how we're setting this up. We're comparing a part of each transversal segment to the entire measurement. All right, so let's solve the first one out in detail, and then we'll kind of quickly go through the other ones. So again, to solve this, we just need to cross-multiply. So we'll say 23P would equal, let's see, 7 times 115 uh, would get us 805. And we'll divide both sides by 23. And 803 divided by 23 would make 35. 
So the value of p over here is 35. We'll put that in the diagram. Now again, these other proportions all get solved in a very similar way. Um, so I'm not going to show quite as much work for the other ones. I'm going to say this one, when you cross multiply, you get 23q would equal 3 times 115, which is 345. Divide both sides by 23, and we would see that q um, has a value of uh, 15. And next, to solve for i, we get 23r is 115 times 2, which is 330, or I'm sorry, 230. Uh, divide both sides by 23, and r has a value of 10. And lastly, we have 23s here would equal 11 times 115, which is 1265. Divide both sides by 23, and s would have a value of 55. Alright, so there's a nice built-in check here. Um, we would have to know that all of these measurements would add to 115, so let's just quickly verify that. Um, 35 and 15 would make 50 when we add, plus 10 makes 60, and plus 55 makes 115. Um, so that's good news. Again, there are other ways that we could have gone through and found the value of each variable here, um, but this is a nice way because it kind of consistently matches up, like I said, a part of each transversal segment to its entire measurement. So to end this lesson, here's another practice question for you to try on your own. So very similar to the last example, just want to make sure you have the hang of using that transversal splitter idea or that diagram. Um, you're going to be finding the values of A, B, C, and D. And again, notice this entire measurement of 85 is given to you.